Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about decimals and significant figures. So, what we have dealt so far with are very, very simple numbers that can often, can often be expressed as integers or whole numbers. But in reality, in practical situations, you will never see that kind of thing. So, whenever you calculate something and you get a whole number uh, for your answer, then that's very unlikely to happen because real life is not that simple. So, to show you what, what decimals and significant figures is, let's say that we have a situation where there's a car that is racing through a track, and the track has a total length of 100 meters. So the starting point is here, and then at 100 meters away from that starting point, we have the finish line. And then suppose there's a person standing on the side of the road with a stopwatch, and they actually time uh, how long it takes for the car to go from this point to that point. So, and they measure it to be 26.4 seconds. Alright, so the, the question is, how can we determine the speed of the car based on this information? Well, from basic physics, we know that the speed is going to be the distance divided by the time. Because speed is expressed in units of meters per second, so if we have meters at the top here and then seconds in the bottom, that's going to be meters per second, which is speed. And now basically what we're going to do is we're going to put these two together here. So that's going to be 100 meters. And then we have 26.4 seconds. In practical situations, we're not going to be performing calculations in our heads. So we're just going to take out a calculator and basically do this operation. So we have these two are going to result in the following number. 3.787878 and then this number is going to keep repeating. Actually, it's going to keep re repeating forever. So it's going to be the same pattern, the same sequence of 7878 is going to keep repeating. So we can clearly see that this is not a number that is very use very useful to us. We cannot just simply write this down as the answer because obviously it's just not going to be possible to include all the digits in it. So what we need to do in that case, and by the way this is going to be meters per second, so that's going to be the units. What we need to do to make this more readable and to actually make it a little bit more accurate is to round it up or round it at round it down. So rounding is the process of choosing a number of decimals that you want to include in your answer and then basically just seeing what the number next to it looks like and based on that number you're going to change the value of the previous number. So in this case let's say we, we have the number 3.7878 and then that keeps repeating and say we want to round this so round to two decimal places. What that actually means is that we're going to take two decimal places, so we start at the, at the point here, so one and two, so that means that we're going to include the first two digits here in the decimals, and we're going to look at the number that is right next to that, so this that's going to be the next number here. Now, is 7 closer to 10 or to 0? Well, clearly, the difference between these two is 3, whereas the difference between these two is 7. So, since 7 is closer to 10, we're going to bring this number up to 10. And what that means is that we're going to have to add a 1 to the 8 here. So, this is actually going to become 3.79. So this would be the same number that we had here, but it would be rounded to two decimal places. The same thing would happen if we were to say, okay, let's round it to round to four decimal places. Then we would take the same number, so now we need to actually write down the first four decimals. And then we know that this is going to continue going like that. So four decimals are these four numbers, so that's four decimal places. And now we're going to look at the number right next to them. 
that's also a 7 again. So what that means is that we're going to, since 7 is closer to 10 than it is to 0, we're going to round this up, which means that we're going to have to add a 1 to this 8 here. So this is going to become 3.7877. Nine, okay, and then we would basically write the answer as in terms of meters per second because whenever we're making a calculation that has units, we need to include the units so we know exactly uh, in terms of what those numbers are. Otherwise, the numbers are just meaningless by themselves. But let's say we have a different situation. Let's say we we were given a number like this. So let's just to make it a little bit different. Let's say we have the following number. 7, 6, 9, 5, 4. And let's say we want to round this to... Let's say we want to round this to three decimal places. Okay, so that means that we're going to start at the dot. We're going to count three decimals. So that's going to be this three here. We're going to look at the number next to them. And... Huh, that's a very interesting case because if we look at this number, it would seem as 5 is actually right in the middle of this 2. So how do we decide which way to round? Well, it turns out that we're just going to round to 10. So anything that is equal to, 10, to 5 or larger, so basically, we're going to round to 10. And anything that is less than 5, we round down to 0. So in this case, we're going to round this to 10, which means that we're going to have to add a 1 to this next digit here, which is 9. But hang on a minute, if we add a 1 to this 9, this is going to become a 10. So that means that if this becomes a 10, that means that this is going to also be added a 1. So in the end, this is actually going to become 5.770. All right, so we have three decimal places, even though the last one is not very uh, important. But this is essentially how you would have to uh, round that up, because you have a 9 here. And if this is rounded to 10, then that means that that 1 needs to get displaced to the next digit. So you're going to end up with this thing here. Now, let's say you had the following number here. 6.785. Three, and you wanted to round this to th uh, three decimal places again. So three decimal places over these ones. Now we're gonna look at the number right at the end here. And well, three is a lot closer to zero than it is close to ten. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down to zero. So this is going to be six point seven eight five. Right, because this is bringing it down, so this is just going to remain like that, and that's how we will round that number. Now, let's do a few more examples just to get you a little bit more comfortable with this idea. So, let's say you have 256.1793, and let's actually do this um, to two decimal places. Okay, so let's start with this one. Well, two decimal places means we're going to take these two numbers, look at the one that is right next to them, and we're going to see is it closer to 10 or is it closer to 0. This one is very close to 10, so clearly we're going to round up. So if this one becomes a 10, we need to add a 1 to this 7 here. So that's going to be 256.18. For the next one, we're going to have 0 0.04459. Okay, so if we want two decimal places, that's going to be that. And now, we're going to have the following number. That one is closer to zero, so we're going to round this one down, which is going to become zero. And then the number is going to be written as 0 0.04. Now, whenever we're doing this kind of operation, we don't actually write a equal sign. We should actually be writing an approximate sign, because it is this number is not exactly the same as this one. So this is actually the correct notation we should be using. So whenever we're rounding a number, 
we're essentially just approximating it by a number that is very very close to it but it is not quite the same so I should have probably done the same to all the other ones here so we're going to use these squiggly lines to represent approximately equal but not exactly equal now let's do the next one this is going to be 4.8972 what is that going to be approximately equal to? Well, we have the two decimal places here. The next one is going to be closer to 10, so we're going to round up, and then we're going to have to add a 1 to this one. So if this one becomes a 10, it turns out that we have to displace the 1 to this side. So this is going to be 4.9. This one is going to stay as a 10, so that's 0. And that's going to be our answer here. So hopefully these examples have shown you a little bit more about what rounding is all about and why we actually need it. Because there are a lot of situations in practical uh, applications in real life that we actually come up with numbers that are extremely large. So trying to write this down as an answer is just going to be impossible. So we need to actually make a decision uh, as to, okay, so how many numbers should we actually retaining an answer so that it remains accurate but it correctly captures what is happening without having to write down an expression like that and in the next video we're going to continue with some more uh, examples on decimals and also on significant figures